In today's video, I've got a very exciting lens for you. It is the Leica Apro Summicron SL 90mm f2. This is like a five and a half thousand dollar lens, which was kindly lent to me at a recent workshop. So I'll give you my first impressions. Let's jump into the video. Hello, Matt here from MrLeica.com. If you're new to the channel, I'm a YouTuber and blogger, but I specialize in black and white female portraiture. And that's what I teach at most of my workshops. So a couple of weeks ago, a photographer requested one of my private one-to-one -one workshops. I met him in London. I arranged all the models and asked him, would you like me to bring any lenses or cameras for you to test? And he said, oh yes, please, could you bring your Lucker Nox Lux and also the TT Artisan 50 0 0.95? So I said, yep, no problem. So I took those lenses for him. And then on the day, he had better kit than me. I had the Leica SL. He had the Leica SL2S. I had some of the like, manual focus lenses and my plastic fantastic Lumix 50 1.8 lens, which I still need to do a review on. He had the Leica Summicron Apo 90 f2 lens, which I've never used before. So when he was using my Noctilux, I said, would you mind if I borrowed your, your very nice Apo Summicron 90 f2 lens, please? I've never used that lens. It's like, yes, of course, help yourself. So the photos you're going to see in this video were shot with the Apo Summicron. Now I've used quite a few 90mm lenses and I've done reviews on all these lenses, both in the blog and on YouTube, but I've never used the SL version. So I was really interested to see how is it compared to my favorite, like a Summicron 90mm F2 non-Apo. So I use the Prius Ferrocal M-mount lens and that is probably my potentially best portrait lens that I've ever used. I think it's the most flattering and I think it renders really beautifully. It's not too sharp and it's very, very flattering for female models. So I wanted to know how good was the Apo version. I was a little bit worried that I thought being an Apo, it might be a bit too sharp, but I was keen to find out. So coming up are example photos. Before we look at lots of pretty photos of models, let me quickly tell you a bit of information about the lens itself. So the Leica 90mm f2 Apo Summicron SL lens is a 11 element in nine group optical design. This is a Leica SL lens, which means it's a full frame L mount autofocus lens, which is like dust proof and splash proof. It's got a maximum aperture of f2, which is obviously amazing for portraits, stopping down to f22. And the advantage over most of the M lenses, it has a close focus distance of 0.6 meters. Uh, most of the lenses, I think the closest M lens is 0.8 meters, which is the macro Elmar 90mm f4. So it goes pretty close, which is really good for, say, tight headshots. Like SL lenses are not known for being small, but if you take the hood off, it's actually quite a compact lens. It weighs 700 grams, which is around 25 ounces. Now, the more important thing is how good are the pictures? So let's take a look. So all these photos you're seeing here are shot with my full frame like SL camera and I shoot in RAW and then I just add my Mr. Leica black and white presets. If you want access to my presets, I can put a link below and you can get them for the camera that you use. All the photos that I'm showing are shot with the Summicron SL 90mm lens and with available light only. I tried to find places where there's both shadow and highlights so I can create hopefully pleasing looking images without needing additional lighting. And then I just pose the models to the light and I try to dress them and style them, both hair and clothes, to try to get the best image I can from like the, the images in my head. Um, as you can see, there's a little window there to use some other lighting. When it gets cold, we come inside and then we're still using available light only. This kind of a bank of tungsten lights behind where the camera is showing. And even though some of these photos are shot as slow as like, I think a 50th of a second, they're still pretty clean looking. And some of them are really, really do pop like that one. That's one of my favorites. Uh, I took the hair into the color and that gave a cleaner looking, more stylized shot. Again, I took her long hair in to give more of a bob cut. I found the location and shot low to give her more, more drama. And yeah, I was really pleased. If you've always wanted to get into model photography, I can put a link below to my free ebook. And that should be a great way to get started. Full ebook still to follow. So those were the pictures. First impressions for me, I was really, really impressed when I was going through the various photos in the Lightroom catalogue after, after the day. I'd shot photos with various lenses, the not to looks, as I say, the plastic fantastic Lumix 51.8, which can actually take good photos. But some of the photos shot with the 90 Apo Summicron SL, they really just have like a 3D pop almost. It's 
they're very soft when it's out of focus but it's really crisp when it is in focus which really makes the photos kind of jump out at you especially if you get the lighting right and the posing right and yeah i was really impressed now as a photographer that specializes in female portraits i need to look after the models and that means i need to look after their skin too if they're not having the best skin day sometimes an apo lens will be a bit sharp now at this point in the video where all the like designers are going to kind of cry when i suggest you might find that the apo simicron lens is better with a mist filter added to the lens in certain conditions i think it would just take the edge off the photos and it'll give you perhaps a similar look to the prius Forelka lens which i love which is less clinical now i think if the model's got perfect skin the apo without a mist filter shot wide open f2 is just as perfect as you can get but on the off chance the model is having a non-perfect day and needs a bit of a bit of help then i think a mist filter as i say will really really do the trick uh, i'm not sure the Leica designers were hoping you'd put a cheaper mist filter on your five thousand dollar lens but i think that would work and then it saves you buying the prius velka lens and the apo lens if you can only afford one it's worth noting the prius velka lens is much cheaper if you prefer older m mount lenses if you want something even softer dare i say it in the same video as a sl leica lens you could also get the jupiter 9 85 mm f2 for a really soft and dreamy portrait lens which costs like less than 100 dollars but yeah probably not the same uh, audience that buys that lens that buys the sl apo lens so i've probably just insulted lots of people so sorry about that so the question is can i recommend the 90 apo summicron and i'd say if your budget allows then yes the advantage of the sl series lenses is they're obviously really well built so they're like a really nice optics and they're autofocus so if you use sl style cameras such as myself especially if using the sl2s which has got slightly better autofocus and image stabilization i think the 90 apo summicron sl lens on the like sl2s with maybe a mist filter in your back pocket could be the ultimate portrait kit setup for a like a photographer now i've just written a detailed blog post on all like a cameras and which are best for portraits and why if you're a portrait photographer or a budding portrait photographer where you're just interested in terms of which camera might be better for different situations and different needs click the link below and that tells you everything you need to know about why one like a camera might be better than another like a camera for both film and digital when it comes to portraits equally if you want to take similar portraits to what i've been showing in this video you definitely can join one of my workshops and pretty much all the students that come to my workshops leave the workshops with near identical photos to those i'm showing with you in today's video you don't actually need a lucky camera to join my workshops you can use any camera i've had people using a d700 recently lumix cameras sony cameras nikon cameras and of course leica cameras but the cameras don't matter so much on the day we're focusing especially on how to take amazing portraits with hopefully really beautiful models so if that sounds of interest again there's links below to the workshops a massive thanks to my student for letting me test his lens which then allowed me to make this video to share with you guys he's actually one of my awesome patrons so shout out to all my awesome patrons thanks so much for watching my videos i really appreciate it and if you've not yet subscribed and you like these types of videos feel free to subscribe below